Whenever you hear the word enemies, what do you think of? Well, it's probably not a very good thought. But when Jesus tells us that we are to love God and to love our neighbors and even to love our enemies, this is something that can seem out of line, especially in regard to the feelings that many in our society today have toward those that we are not familiar with, those who maybe we don't like, that we don't get along with. But these were considered by the Jews to be the two greatest commands in the law of Moses. But as we see in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, there was a question about who exactly is my neighbor. The Jews understood neighbor to mean only fellow Jews, not Gentiles, and certainly not the despised Samaritans. But once again, Jesus completely ignored the conventional wisdom of the day by making a Samaritan. Now we must understand that Samaritans were considered the enemies of the Jews. The Jews would have nothing at all to do with the Samaritans. But Jesus uses a Samaritan as the hero of this story. It all began when a man came up to Jesus and asked what he needed to do in order to inherit eternal life. Now this man was an expert in the law of Moses and Luke indicated that he was not coming to Jesus with this question out of sincere interest. He did not really want to know how to inherit eternal life, but he was coming to test Jesus. He wanted to see how Jesus would answer this question. From eternal life and the commandments, the discussion moved to another topic that is summarized in this man's question. Who is my neighbor? Now Jesus could have answered the man's question just very pointedly and said, everybody is your neighbor. Instead, he told a story that led the man to answer his own question. We call Jesus' story the parable of the Good Samaritan. It is one of the most well-known of Jesus' parables, and it's about a man who was attacked on the road and left for dead. Now we assume that this man that had been attacked was a Jew. Two people came by and saw him. The first was a priest, the second was a Levite, considered the best of the best of the Jews. Those that were supposed to be the holiest, that were to know the most about how to live according to the law of Moses. They come along and they saw the situation, but they passed by on the other side of the road. Both of these were religious leaders. They should have stopped and helped this man, but they didn't. But the other one, the one who came along and did help, was a Samaritan. A story with a Samaritan as the hero was not what Jesus' listeners would have expected on this occasion. There was such haste, hatred and hostility between the Jews and the Samaritans that went back centuries at this point. Obviously, Jesus' use of a Samaritan as a positive role model had a purpose behind it. The main lesson of the story is to have compassion on others, especially those who are less fortunate than we are. But there's another lesson as well in Jesus' story. It's about avoiding prejudice and accepting others who may not be like us. There were commandments in the law for loving your neighbors, Leviticus 19.18, and about showing kindness to strangers, Deuteronomy 10.16-19. But the Jews had come to ignore these commands. And that is why Jesus' story is one that is so important. It reminds us that God wants us to be kind and compassionate to everyone, no matter who they are or where they come from. Today we use the expression Good Samaritan in a positive way, such as the name of a hospital or a charitable organization. In Jesus' day, the word Samaritan had a very different meaning. Jesus' listeners would have been shocked by this story. But that's exactly what Jesus wanted to happen. And in the end, the man admitted, perhaps grudgingly, that the Samaritan had been a neighbor to this injured man. But not leaving it at that, Jesus sent him away with an assignment. And the same assignment 
is for us today as well. Go and do likewise. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today, and we pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day.